by far the most asked question that I see in a bunch of print on demand groups that I'm in and even here on YouTube is people asking, is this niche safe for me to design for? This is a completely valid question because really copyright and trademark and all the rules around print on demand can be super confusing and it seems like they're constantly changing too. I think it's totally awesome that you want to be protecting your account and keeping it safe. So it is really important to be asking, is this niche safe? But to save you a bunch of time and not have you have to wait for other people to help you figure out if this niche is safe, I'm gonna share with you the easiest and quickest way that you can look up if any niche is safe out there. Make sure you watch to the end of the video too because I'm also going to share some other common copyright infringements that people are making that are definitely leading to their accounts getting terminated, so you don't wanna miss that. The number one reason that people are losing their accounts and getting terminated on Etsy, Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, and many other print-on-demand platforms is simply because they are either accidentally or on purpose infringing on trademarks, copyrights, and other people's intellectual property. That's why it's really important to be super vigilant in making sure that you are not violating any of their policies or infringing on other people's trademarks. Because even if you do it by accident, Amazon or someplace like Etsy or Redbubble, they will not hesitate in just immediately banning you from their platform. It could be on your 20th strike or sometimes even your first strike. So that's why you need to be very aware and be very careful in knowing how to find if a phrase or an image has a trademark on it. It's easy sometimes to think, well, I can bend the rules because the reality is there are tons of people, especially on Etsy and Redbubble, that are blatantly going against these trademark and copyright laws and infringing on other people's property, selling things like Disney or Marvel in their small Etsy shop. But this still goes against Etsy's policies and if they find out that you're doing that, they aren't going to hesitate to kick you off the platform and maybe even ban you from selling there again in the future as well. Even though it's really frustrating because you see these new shops selling trademarked characters having tons of success and making a lot of sales up front. This is not a way to build a sustainable business because they are going to inevitably have their shops closed down. It's better for you to run your print on demand business correctly and play for the long term game because you're going to end up making more money in the long run if you can build a sustainable business that is just going to last over time making you sales month after month instead of just making a bunch of money right up front and then never being able to profit off of this business again. The exact method that I have used to find out if any phrase or word is trademarked is completely free and it's what I've been doing for several years and that is just using the free Trademark Electronic Search System, or TESS for short. This is simply a database of the United States trademarks. Using this, you can simply plug in a phrase that you are thinking about using and then search it to see if there are any live or dead trademarks for this. So what I like to do is when I do have an idea that maybe I found using a tool like Merch Informer that I see is selling super well, before I even create my design, I'm going to take those keywords or that phrase plug them into the trademark electronic search system and just quickly evaluate if there are any trademarks that I need to be aware of. One thing to know is sometimes you will see the exact phrase show up on this database, but if you look to the right of it, you will see that this trademark is actually dead, meaning that you can use that phrase. Another thing you might want to do is sometimes you will see several of this phrase come up and the trademark is live. But if you click on it, you will see that this is maybe a trademark for a food item or this is a trademark for a service. So a lot of times with those, those phrases are safe to use on apparel like hoodies and t-shirts or tote bags, but they wouldn't be safe to use if you were, say, starting a business in that same genre of what has been trademarked. So you really need to do a little bit of digging if you do see that the phrase you're trying to use is live. If you see that there's a live trademark for something that has to do with tank tops, t-shirts, apparel, just stay away from it. Don't even try to use that. While it's really important to check the phrases that you're going to be using on your shirts and apparel, you also need to be checking any of the phrases or keywords that you're going to be using in your title, your bullets, and your description. I see people be really confused why they got a rejection or why one of their items was taken down because their title was completely safe 
But what they didn't realize is that they used a phrase in the bullet points that actually had a trademark on it. But sometimes you need to look up some of the longer or more common phrases that you want to put in your description as well and make sure those are not going to put your account at risk of being flagged. If you're working on the US marketplace, the trademark electronic search system is the easiest thing to use. And even though it's adding an extra step to your process, this is going to save you so much time in the long run if you are going to keep your account safe. So definitely it is not a step that you want to skip. If you are designing specifically for another marketplace such as Japan, Germany, or any of the other markets that you are able to sell on through Amazon and Etsy, I would also be taking a look at some of their trademark databases. Amazon has said that if your products are auto uploaded by them to other marketplaces, if something triggers a trademark in a different country, that is not going to count against your account. But if you yourself are designing specifically for one of those countries, I would certainly be taking a look at their databases too. I know they have one similar to the trademark electronic search system, which I will link down below in the description so you can check it out. I know finding safe niches is definitely a lot of work. That's why I've actually put together a newsletter resource for you guys that goes out every Wednesday. In it, I'm going to share five trendy or low competition niches that are safe for you guys to use so you don't even have to worry about those. I'll put that down in the description too and make sure you're signed up if you aren't already to get those five free niches every single week directly to your inbox. Another thing that I see a lot of people doing or asking if this is safe to do is using things like song lyrics on t-shirts. One that I've seen floating around a bunch and it suddenly spiked in sales is from Taylor Swift's new song, the quote, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Even though people aren't putting Taylor Swift in their description, they're not even naming the album or the song, this is using someone's copyrighted intellectual property. While this might not always trigger an automatic rejection, if later someone sees that you are using someone else's property, you definitely are putting your account at risk. You are not able to use lyrics to songs that other people have written because you don't have the rights to do that. When people are selling merchandise with lyrics on them or other artists are sampling people's songs, they have paid huge royalty fees to that artist to be able to use their intellectual property. So if you are just putting it on a shirt on Amazon, you are in no way associated with Taylor Swift. You aren't paying her any money. So that is not okay for you to be doing. Another one that I see a lot of people getting themselves into trouble in is trying to use movie quotes, especially around this time of year from famous Christmas movies. You'll see funny quotes from Elf on a shirt, or you'll see things from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, a bunch of Clark quotes, or even something like you'll shoot your eye out from a Christmas story. While those are all cute and fun and people are actually looking to buy those around this time of year, those go directly against the copyright policy. You are using somebody else's intellectual property. And once again, you don't have any relationship with that movie or brand so you do not have permission to use them. A lot of times if you do search those phrases they're not going to pop up on a trademark website but you just need to know that if something is from a movie or a song chances are it's not going to be safe for you to use. There is however one big exception to selling copyright and trademark materials and that is going to be on Redbubble. No, you can't just upload whatever you want on Redbubble. Well, it does seem like some people try to do that because you will risk getting your account terminated. But Redbubble has an amazing thing called the Redbubble Partner Program where they have collaborated with a bunch of big brands, TV shows, and movies to be able to offer actual real licensed merchandise that you can sell. You can actually be a part of the Redbubble Partner Program. It's not hard to do, but there are a few steps that you're going to need to take. So I've actually planned out my entire next video all about how you can sell things from shows like Schitt's Creek, from Star Trek, and from many other big names that people are really looking to buy. If you want to know how to sell these types of items on Redbubble, make sure you're subscribed because you definitely don't want to miss that next video. And in the meantime, I have a couple videos here that I think are really going to help you out on your print on demand journey. So take a look at those. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.